All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you all here for showing up. Absolute Basketball Coaches Corner. Uh, this is a, a completely free virtual coaches clinic that we have every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday um, of each week. Uh, today, very fortunate to have Frank Young of Appalachian State come on. He's going to talk about Penetrate and Pitch Development Series. Um, I want to reiterate to everybody who's in here listening and as people continue to go, we want this to be an interactive uh, type of situation. So Frank's going to talk and present. Um, we want questions uh, at the end. Um, we'll let y'all self patrol the questions that you have, or you can send them to me if you'd like to. I've already had a couple people send some emails. If you want to send it in the, in the chat room or in an email, I am Jamie Shaw at Gmail. Uh, you can do that too, and we'll get those questions asked. But we want it to be interactive as possible there toward the end. Uh, to introduce Frank, Frank played at the University of West Virginia. Uh, he was there with John Beeline. We had a great little discussion about that prior to getting started here. But uh, he, he went over, he played pro overseas. Uh, for a little while, came back. Uh, Dobo, uh, North Florida, he got on the floor at Presbyterian uh, and, uh, with Coach Kearns, and he went up uh, to Appalachian State with Coach Kearns here. So very excited to hear uh, his expertise coming both from the playing side, the professional side, and then on the opposite coaching side um, as well with the Penetrate and Pitch Development Series because this is something that everybody, um, you know, everybody can use and everybody can, can, can implement as well, no matter what level you're coaching. Um, but without further ado, again, here's uh, Coach <clears throat> Frank Young, uh, here on the Absolute Basketball Coaches Corner. Jamie, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, coaches, thanks you for joining me and, uh, you know, taking some time out to uh, allow me to present to you and talk about, you know, our special program here at App State. Um, you know, we, we just came off our first year here and, um, you know, we're excited about uh, the years coming up here moving forward and um, just look forward to, um, the, the future here at App State. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here um, so that y'all can see the presentation. Can you all see my screen? I'm going to assume so. All right. All right, so here we go. So a little bit of background about me, like Jamie mentioned. Uh, Played at West Virginia University from 03 to 07 on the coach John Beeline. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have some success there. Uh, went to the Elite Eight, Sweet 16, and uh, senior year won the NIT championship. I was fortunate enough to win the NIT MVP of that tournament. Uh, played three years overseas in Germany and the Netherlands. Um, then I got my coaching career started. Um, started at Division II school in uh, West Virginia, West Virginia Wesleyan College. Was there for one year. Um, after that, was able to join the staff at University of North Florida under Coach Matthew Driscoll, who happens to be in uh, being on this forum today. Uh, he, he is a, a special man in my life, a mentor, always look up to him, always can lean on him for advice. Uh, learned a lot from him during my three years there. I actually got um, you know, this concept from um, him during my time in North Florida. Uh, during my time there, we were able to win back-to-back -back conference championships regular season, won the conference tournament in 14-15, and was able to make an appearance in the NCAA tournament. Um, after that, uh, Coach Dustin Kearns got the job at Presbyterian College. Uh, we were there for two years, and I joined the staff there as an assistant. Uh, we were able to win uh, 20 games in our second year there at, uh, at Presbyterian, and it was the first 20-win season in the uh, Division One history at Presbyterian. And then we joined the staff here uh, last, last April uh, at App State. So in our first season at App State, we were able to have some accomplishments here, uh, here in our first year. Um, we won 18 games last year, which is the most win for a first-year head coach for Coach Kern since 1941 at the school. Um, first winning record since 2011. Um, we had 11 Sunbelt wins last year, which is the most wins ever in Sunbelt history for the school. Um, we were able to improve the win total by seven wins, which was the third best turnaround in the country for first-year head coaches um, that were hired, uh, newly hired head coaches um, last year. There were 60 hired uh, coaches last year. We were, had the third best turnaround. And then one stat that we're very proud of, we were one of two Division I schools to have seven players record a double-double. And the significance behind that is that we, we really preach to our guys sharing the ball, move, ball movement, and good for grace. I'll talk about that more later. 
Um, but good for Grace. We want to make sure we're getting everybody involved that's on the floor. <clears throat> so some of the teaching points with penetrating pitch is you know, simple, basic fundamentals. When you're driving the ball, you want to come to a jump stop. You want to play off two feet. And that comes from our basic drill we call Spurs passing drill. I'll go over that in a little bit, but that's our, our basic drill. We do that in the first week of practice, and we do that throughout the year. And it's just repetitions of simple driving the ball, playing off two, and kicking the ball to your man. Proper spacing. Uh, you don't, you don't want to crowd it, your teammates. You don't want to have one guy guarding two. You want to make sure you have enough space to that. If the ball is swung to you, one guy can't guard you and then guard the man that's, <clears throat> that's near you. And you want to create driving lanes. You want to allow your guys to have space to drive down, get into the paint, and either score at the rim or kick it out uh, for a wide open shot. Um, you want to make your drives and your passes on time and on target. A uh, bad pass is a missed opportunity. If you do your drive and you drive in there in the paint and then you, you try to make a pass but it's not on target and now your teammate has to bobble the ball, well, that's now that's not that's a missed opportunity for a wide open shot that they that guy could have taken. Um, shot prep, you know, the job is not only the guy driving the ball; it's also on the guy that's getting ready for the shot. We will always yell, "Shot prep, shot prep, shot prep." So we always yell that out when we're doing this drill, and that means having your hands up, ready to shoot, hips down, eyes up, ready to catch it, ready to get it all quick, shooting a game like shot. Um, sharing the ball, good for greats. Um, we always want to look for the best possible shot that we can get within our offense. So if you drive the ball, you may be able to shoot a 15-foot pull-up. But if, they, they, if you have a defender that's helping on that drive and you can kick it out or you can swing it for one more, then that's, that's a great shot instead of taking a good shot. And <clears throat> lastly, we want to make our, let our guys be players within the offense, not robots. The, the main thing we, we teach in this penetrating pitch series is we want our guys to be players and we want them to look for opportunities to make plays with any offense or whenever the offense is breaking down. And we don't, we don't want our guys always looking to the sideline, looking to Coach Kern saying, what's the next play? That's being robotic and that's doing too much thinking. We want them to play. We want them to be players that have a lot of freedom. <clears throat> so the, the, Development progression of this is we go through a two-man series, three-man series, and then we, we want to implement a big. Um, and as we're implementing a big, you know, we'll see, we'll have, we have a couple of uh, simple rules for them as we, uh, as we implement them at the end. So single versus double gaps. Single gaps is, you know, you don't want to, I'll show an example in a minute, but you don't want to crowd your teammate like I mentioned before. And these are better opportunities for one more or to move the ball to create a driving lane for somebody else. All right, so um, single gaps, we play pack line defense. And so that's where we got the concept of single versus double gaps. Double gaps is when there's more space between you and the next guy that you're going to be driving towards. Um, so these are more opportunities to relocate on drives. This is a good chance to also look for catching goals to get downhill. A catching goal is when the ball is swung to you. You're not even looking at the rim to shoot it. You're catching on the run. You're trying to create leverage. And you're trying to get, create an advantage to get downhill um, against your defender. So this is an example here of single gap. So you got a guy here in the lane line extended, which we call the slot, guy on the wing, guy in the corner. So if either of these guys have the ball and they drive it towards, say, so let's say three tries to drive it towards a two, that's a single gap. That's going to be very crowded. That's not, a very, that's not a good opportunity to try to drive the ball. You need to just swing it so that we can try to um, expose the defense and try to get a, a double gap opportunity. <clears throat> this here is an example of a double gap. So let's go back here. So let's say two has the ball. He swings it to one. He cuts through. Now one and three are playing on the same side. Now you created a double gap. Now you have more room to drive the ball. All right, that's simple, but that's an easy concept to where you're creating driving lanes and you got more space for your guys to create, get downhill to either finish at the rim or kick it out to your teammate. So getting back to the double gap, we got a guy in the slot, guy in the corner. Now this is just one example. We'll show double gaps when we get more examples when we get into the two-man series, but this is just one example of a double gap here. You got a guy in the slot, 
and the guy here in the corner. So another, uh, as you build upon this series, you can add situations within your offense. So we'll show some examples later on, but you'll have some ball screen action where you come off a, a side ball screen, you're getting downhill, trying to create situations where you're create, attacking a double gap. Uh, middle ball situations also coming off the ball screen, attacking double gaps. Uh, screen in action. So let's say you want to start the ball on the wing, but you want your guy, you want your guy to come off a, a pin down. So you start him at the block, you set him, have him come off the pin down, he runs to the wing. Now you can initiate the drill for where you want him to drive. Uh, same thing with the flare screen. This is just showing the guys that they visually see how these drills are, are implemented into game-like situations. And then you can adapt to scouting reports during the season. So let's say you're, you're watching film on an opponent and you see that they don't guard certain situations very well. So you try to find tweaks in your offense or you try to find different situations that you can create within your offense to expose that situation that they don't guard well. And then <clears throat> you implement it with the penetrating pitch series and you, um, you, go, you drill that over and over leading up to that particular game. So this is our Spurs passing drill. <clears throat> so you have four lines. You got a line in the slot with the one, the slot area, two, slot area, three, and four in the corners. So take your, te take your team, put them in four lines, and have a ball, if you can, have a ball in each line. So let's start with guy right here, number one. So he's going to drive the nail. He's going to play off two, and he's going to kick it to the two. And then he's going to get in this line behind two. Same thing with two. Two is going to drive down. He's going to play off two feet, come to a jump stop, kick it to three, get in this line. Now three is going to drive baseline. He's going to make the drift pass to four. Now he's got a sprint in line here. Four is going to do the same thing. He's going to drive middle, play off two, kick it to one. And it, you don't have to do this for a long time. You can do this for five minutes. This is a good warm-up at the beginning of practice. We did this drill um, during my time at West Virginia. And so um, no, I'm very familiar with this drill. We've, it's a simple drill that you can implement um, at all levels. And so we would yell out, drive right, pass right, drive right, pass right. And they would do that for one or two minutes. Then you would say freeze, make sure the lines are even. And then you would yell, drive left, pass left, drive left, pass left. And then you just do that five minutes. You got, you got five, 10 reps for each guy making those passes, and then it becomes muscle memory that, you know, the, this is a, a simple emphasis that, you, that you're looking for from your teams to avoid charges. <clears throat> now we can start with our two-man series. All right, so like I, like I showed uh, earlier, our first example is slot and corner, slot and corner. So ball will start here in the slot. You got a man here in the corner. So we got here uh, Justin Forrest, first team uh, all-conference last year, averaged 17 points for us. He's setting his man up. He's forcing him to drive the ball right. You see all this space right here. Nobody's in his way, all this space. Drives downhill, comes to a jump stop, makes sure he doesn't charge, kicks it out to Isaac Johnson for a wide-open shot. Now, Isaac was not comfortable shooting this shot when we arrived here last year, but we put in a lot of work. He made five threes the year before we got here. This year, he made 28. So we felt, we felt very comfortable with him taking this kind of shot um, do, throughout the season uh, last year for us. And he knocked down a lot of them for us. Bucket. Now, you could argue that this isn't here is not a double gap because we have O'Shawn Williams here driving towards Mike Bibby, who is on the wing and, and not in the corner. But here you have room to relocate. All right, so he can relocate to the corner, which will create a longer closeout once Mike Bibby's man's helps uh, on the drive. So O'Shawn drives in. He, he notices the man helping. Bibby slides down a little bit. Wide open shot. Boom, knocks it down. Now we have a game-like situation here. We got a high ball screen here for Justin. You got O'Shawn Williams, another guy that helped us out a lot and really improved his game, went from 21 made threes the year prior to 64 made threes. 
So he became one of our best three-point shooters last year. Justin gets downhill. Justin creates, uh, attracts a lot of attention whenever he drives the ball uh, into the paint. He actually splits the defense, makes a good pass to O'Shawn. O'Shawn knocks it down. Now, this here is against the zone. Now, Mike Bibby here has the ball, drives down. We still have that double gap look. Nobody's here. Got a lot of space to drive the ball. He creates a help. Adrian Delph, who's going to be a junior for us next year, boom, knocks it down. Same look. Again, all, a lot of eyes on Justin. Gets downhill. Now, he doesn't play off two. He's still under control, splits the defense, doesn't create a charge, kicks out the O'Shawn. Wide open three, knocks it down. Now, this here is a good example of a catch and go. Again, you could say this is a, a single gap, but Kendall here has a lot of room to move. Now, when we do these drills, we are, the guy that's making the first pass, we always tell him, pass and get out. We're, we want to get him another shot after he makes the pass. And this gives him incentive to move after he makes the pass because right here, if O'Shawn makes this pass and then he just stands where he is, now Kendall's driving, Kendall and O'Shawn are going to run into each other. So we don't want those guys to stand after they make that pass. All right, so here, Kendall does a good job on the catch and go. Doesn't even look at the rim. Let's back it up. Doesn't even look at the rim. He knows he wants to drive the ball. So he drives it. Boom. O'Shawn's man helps for half a second. Kendall notices the help. He makes a good pass here to O'Shawn. Boom. Knocks it down. Same deal, Adrian Delph gets a high ball screen, drives down, hits Justin. Now, if, if Adrian just stood and watched, expecting Justin to shoot the ball, they would run into each other because Justin now drives it. AD's man right here helps on the drive, kicks it out, wide open three, knocks it down. Now, this is just Isaac Johnson here being a player. All right, so... He drives it out. He notices his man is so far up the line trying to stop O'Shawn's drive that he makes a back cut instead of staying in the corner. So this is another way that you can implement your own twist with your offense into these drills. So he drives down instead of having your guy stand in the corner for a shot, say he's not a good shooter, you just have him back cut. But Isaac here, he's just making a read. O'Shawn makes a good pass through the ear and one. Now, this is another example here. This is just opposite slot, opposite corner. Opposite slot, opposite corner. And you'll see in some of these clips that if whatever you're working on in practice, they're not going to be perfect for how they're going to be implemented in the game. This guy here may be in the top of the key. You know, this is just showing you, them the concepts of when there's a good opportunity to drive the ball when you have these double gaps. Now, you could say, that this is a single gap because you have O'Shawn here, Justin, and then you have Kendall. But you got Justin here who's 17 points, first team all conference. They're not going to help off him. So it turns into a double gap because this man is, his man is sucked so far out that he's, he's not going to help. He's not going to help on this drive. So it turns into a double gap. Gets downhill, makes a good pass to Kendall. Kendall knocks it down. Kendall had a great freshman season for us. Um, ended up becoming – um, our best defender for us throughout at the end of the year. Same deal. Now, Adrian, we're in transition. Adrian kicks it to Justin. Justin Justin's very good at selling his shot fake. Sells his shot fake. Defender bites on it. Jumps straight up, and he jumps straight up and down. Doesn't make a great pass, but Adrian still knocks it down. Here's a game-like situation. Mike Bibby's coming off a handoff off Hunter Seacat. He uh, come, uh, turns the corner tight. Now he, he sucks the defense in, kicks it out. O'Shawn Williams knocks it down. This is a horns look here. Justin comes off Isaac's ball screen. Now he notices he don't want to drive here because Kendall's man is sitting right there. All right, so he... He comes back going left, going getting mid downhill in the middle. Look at all the attention he, he attracts. All that attention he attracts allows him to drive in, doesn't have a good shot, kicks it out to O'Shawn for a wide open three. 
just sharing the ball, sharing the ball. Now you can do the same thing here where the guy is just, I have this guy just for the diagram here in the opposite slot. But this guy could be in the opposite slot. He can be in the ball side slot. Main things, double gap, double gap, double gap. Those are your opportunities to drive the ball as a double gap. All right, so, but we're starting the ball here in the corner now. All right, so one man's going to drive here, drive downhill, play off two feet. This is a good chance to relocate and find a better passing angle so that you can be open for, for a shot. So we got Adrian right here driving the ball. Now he keeps attacking. O'Shawn's man is right here sitting at the logo. Adrian drives in. A O'Shawn's man tries to help, tries to get a steal. O'Shawn relocates. Wide open look. That's a bucket. Wings it. Now, Adrian in the corner. Justin relocates, slides more towards the middle. Justin's man helps just a little bit on that drive, which creates a long closeout. That's a bucket for Justin right there. Boom. Now, this, uh, this action here, we call a Euro. Anytime we drive in the paint, play off two feet, let's say they're taking away the corner three. We don't have a skip. Now we have a guy filling behind. So he will reverse pivot, and uh, the one man is going to swing it. The one man here is going to swing it to the two. We call that a Euro. All right, so anytime you drive downhill and you can make a pass behind you, we call that a Euro. So you, we're going to see some good examples here. So you got O'Shawn here getting downhill, uses spin dribble, keeps his dribble alive. Kendall, right? Kendall's man helps on the drive, kicks it out. Kendall knocks it down. Boom. O'Shawn again drives in, crack, attracts a lot of attention. Nowhere to pass it. Isaac spaces out, makes himself available, gets his flip, foot planted, knocks down a wide open three. Good example here. So sometimes when we do the drill, we'll say, let's drive in, play off two. Let's add a couple of pivots before we make the pass. So this is when this drill will work. This uh, example will work here. Adrian Dell takes the ball. This is another perfect, another perfect example why we want to come to a jump, out, jump stop instead of uh, making a jump pass in the air. If Adrian jumps in the air, that's a steal. Because Justin's man's here, he's ready to shoot the lane. He's gonna go down. He's gonna, and he's gonna get an easy layup. All right, but we see Delph get downhill, play off two. He pivots. Justin's man takes away the initial pass. Justin doesn't give up on the play, makes himself available again, relocates. Uh, Delph makes the pass. Justin knocks it down. Good example here, Kendall. Got very good at catching goals. Catches it, then you look at the rim, gets downhill, plays off two, reverse pivot, finds Justin, boom, bucket. Now this is in transition. Justin has it, no, uh, defense is trying to still get set, trying to find a man, no boy accounts for Isaac. Knocks it down. Again in transition, O'Shawn, Plays off two. Every uh, defense collapses. You see all five defenders are below the free throw line. Kicks it out to Mike Bibby. Boom, knocks it down. So here's another double gap opportunity. So we've been driving downhill, kicking it to the corner, kicking it to the corner. Well, another opportunity we have here is wing the wing, wing the wing. So we showed the single gap opportunity where we had slot, wing, corner. All right, so now we have wing to wing. This is another opportunity for a double gap where you can drive downhill. We all, when we drive in middle, we always want to try to attack the nail, attack the nail, because that's where a lot of the defense is going to help. So you want to attack that defender. Attack the nail and then kick it out uh, for a wide open shot. So we have an example here. Justin attacks the nail. They try to ice the ball screen. So he attacks, gets downhill, makes a jump pass. Over the defense, O'Shawn's ready to shoot and knocks it down. <clears throat> Adrian Delph, this is here is against, 
against their zone. Now, they don't want him to drive middle. They want him to drive towards the baseline side. But he snakes it. We call that a snake. Gets to the middle of the lane. Gets to the free, th uh, free throw line area. Makes O'Shawn man collapse. Help on the drive. Kicks it out. Gets a good for great. Delph might, might have been able to shoot this shot. But for him, this is just a good shot. For O'Shawn, this is a great shot. That's a bucket. Here's a better look right here. You see O'Shawn man sitting right here at the, at the nail. Justin's going to attack the nail. O'Shawn's going to relocate to create a better passing lane and knock down the shot. So he drives in. Justin does a good job making a jump pass straight up and down. Straight up and down so he doesn't uh, make a charge. Knocks it down. Now, you can see the flow of the offense in this clip here. All right, so we feed the post. Anytime we feed the post, we want to split. We want to create movement anytime we feed the post. Create movement. James Lewis does a good job of making a skip pass to Bibby. Now, Bibby drives middle, but he already sees that nobody is near O'Shawn. All right, so there's no reason to drive to the nail if there's no defender there. He already sees O'Shawn open. He just kicks it to him, lets him knock it down. Boom. Now, this here is against zone. Same principles. Adrian swings it to Justin. Justin sells a shot fake. Defender bites on it. That half, half a second shot fake makes the defender bite, which makes that defender help there. Kicks it right back to Delph. Wide open shot, bucket. So that, those are examples of how we implement our two-man series. Again, you can do that with all of your guys. Just create two lines and then just create a rotation and have it, uh, put any kind of spin on that you, that you see fit for your, your type of offense. All right, so now we can move on to <clears throat> the three-man series. So we, when we go three-man series, we'll yell out, wing, wing, corner, wing, wing, corner. So when the guys hear that, they know we got to get three lines in those spots, and we want to start the ball here on the weak side. All right, so you can start on the wing. Same look. You can go wing or corner. It doesn't matter. Only thing you're working on is the different angle of the pass when you're driving it. So when you drive baseline versus driving baseline from the wing, it just, it just creates a different passing angle for when you have to make that pass. We call this a drift pass, baseline drift, uh, anytime you have to make that drift pass. So we have O'Shawn here in transition. They're trying to get set. O'Shawn does a good in and out, plays off two feet. Isaac catches it. Now, most defenses, they will rotate here, but this defender doesn't want to leave Justin. So Isaac has a wide open shot. So in normal circumstances, defender would rotate to Isaac. Isaac has a great one more to Justin, wide open shot. But since they don't rotate to Justin, Isaac notices that, has his foot planted, ready to shoot, and knocks it down. Same, same scenario, step up screen. James sets a step up screen for O'Shawn. O'Shawn gets downhill. Now he's getting bumped a little bit. He has to jump out of bounds to create the passing angle. Makes a great pass to freshman Donovan Gregory. Donovan knows his defender is looking at him. Nobody's rotating the baby, so he doesn't even think. He knows that there's a guy who's supposed to be on that wing. All right, so that, that's just the spacing that we create. So he makes a quick pass, one more, doesn't even think about it. That's wide open shot. Bibby knocks it down. So same scenario. You no, know, we didn't get a lot of opportunities with this scenario here, but, you know, later in the year, we would go into situations where uh, opposing teams would try to take away the drift pass. And so when they try to take away the drift pass, we're going to say we're going to drive baseline. We're going to look for that opposite skip to the opposite wing. All right, so that's just – they know to look for that going into certain games. All right, so they would drive baseline, play off two feet. More often than not, it's going to have to be a jump pass because most of the defense is going to be in this area right here. All right, so they drive baseline, play off two feet, make the skip to the opposite wing, or some coaches call it the 45. Same, <clears throat> same difference with the baseline drive here from the corner. So you have Justin here, 
ripping baseline. Now there's nobody here in this corner, but he knows that somebody's going to be here in this wing. Makes a jump pass, skips it to Delph. Wide open look. Bucket. Now, same deal. We worked on the Euros out of the two-man series. Now we can work on the Euros with one more out of, uh, out of three-man series. So you've got a man here in the slot, guy on the wing, guy in the corner. So we're going to drive down the slot here. This two-man, he's going he's gonna to make himself available. Let's, now let's think all five on the floor. Let's say another guy's here is in his ball side corner. They're taking, we're, we're killing them. They're taking away, or their principle is to take away the ball side three. All right, so we drive down the slot. They're not helping on this drive here. So we drive down, playoff two, reverse pivot. This two man here is going to make himself available for the pass here. He either has the shot or a three man defender rotates. He has the one more here to the corner. <clears throat> so we got O'Shawn here. He's attacking, getting downhill. Isaac does a great job making himself available. Justin Mann rotates to Isaac. He sees Justin's man rotating. He doesn't even think about shooting it because he knows that he has a good shot. Justin has a great shot. He swings it. Not a man in sight. This is a great example here of a one more pass right here. All right, sharing the ball, getting everybody involved. That's a bucket. Game-like situation here, high ball screen. They're not helping off Isaac. Hunter's man is helping on the ball screen. Justin man, who's the furthest man away, he tags. Uh, O'Shawn notices that. Hits the Euro, hits Delph. Delph man so notices that Justin's man is still closing out. Swings it. You would give Justin that much space, he's going to knock it down. Bucket. Now, same example. Like I mentioned earlier, the game examples aren't going to be perfect like you worked on in practice. All right? So you're going to see some clips where it may not look like this. We just want them to see the concepts on the floor and let it translate to the game. But main thing we want to preach in these situations, when you have a guy on the wing in the corner, is always looking for that one more. Always looking for the one more. So one man has the ball. He's driving towards the nail, getting into the paint. He can kick to the two, two man rotates, swing to the three for the one more. But you also have the option if you get deep into the lane, is kicking to the three man, two rotates here, one more um, to the two man for a shot. So you have those, both of those options. So this here is in transition. Transition, we don't even have to drive the ball. Delph notices an advantage on the weak side, swings it to Isaac. As he swings it to Isaac, Isaac man, uh, Bibby's man rotates up to Isaac. Isaac swings it to Bibby without even thinking about it. Wide open three, bucket, transition. Got Justin here trying to attack. Put some pressure on the defense. Now he kicks it to the corner. Isaac could shoot that. He, he, he could shoot it. It's a good shot for him. But he notices Delph trailing. Nobody around Delph makes a good job of making a one more. That's a bucket. Do the same thing against the zone. Kendall does a good job swinging at the Justin. They're going to run at Justin. Justin pump fakes, gets downhill. This guy is expecting Justin to drive all the way down. He stays on the block while Isaac's there in the corner. Swings it. Bucket. Now, we've done all of that, and we've implemented, we haven't even implemented our bigs yet. So all those situations are to get either wide open threes or when guys are closing out, you're creating driving lanes for those guys <clears throat> to get downhill. All right, so now we're going to implement the bigs because you can't – and we, we actually had a lot of success from implementing our bigs this year because as the year went along, we were shooting the ball better from three later on in the year. And so uh, defenses weren't helping off our shooters as much. So we would get uh, – more; our guards would get downhill more which allowed the, the bigs to help up and then we're allowed to get a lot of easy layups for our bigs um, in these situations. So we didn't have a lot of these opportunities. I just wanted to show this. So anytime we have a baseline drive, we want to teach our bigs 
this is another nugget I picked up from Coach Driscoll. We want to have the bigs get to the top of the charge circle. So say we drive baseline and the big stays right here on the block. Well, if we want to make a drift pass, he's going to be in the way of the pass. All right, so now he's eliminating this option to make that drift pass to the shooter in the opposite corner. All right, so when we drive baseline, we always tell them, make yourselves available, move to the top of the charge circle so you, can, uh, you won't be in the way of this drift pass, and then your defender <clears throat> has to move with you. You may get an easy layup right at the rim. So here's an example here in transition. O'Shawn drives baseline, makes a pass to Hunter, easy layup and one. Now, driving down the slot. Ball John down the slot. They're not helping here off, off this corner. All right. They're not helping off this corner. So they drive, we drive, want to drive down the slot. We're playing off two. And then we're going to look to make this pocket pass to the big. Now, in this situation, all we want to teach to our big is to make yourselves available. We don't want them thinking too much in these situations. Just make yourself available. You can relocate to the opposite block or you can relocate, get below the box so that you create um, more space for you to finish at the rim. But just don't stand in the same spot. You'll see our bigs here do a great job of that. So Justin, you see they're really pressuring Justin out here. Justin does a good job getting downhill. They don't want to help off Delph. Hunter Seacast man is right here. He's above the charge circle. He's helping on, on the stop Justin on drive. Justin notices it. Makes a good pocket pass to Hunter. Hunter goes up and finishes. Now, this is Isaac at 6'8 making this play. He wouldn't have been able to make this play last year. But going through these reps, going through these simple drills um, two, three times a week made him a lot more comfortable operating from the three-point line as opposed to just a 15-foot uh, line where he was last year. So he drives down, notices James Lewis, Lewis's man is helping on the drive. Makes a good pocket pass. James goes up and finishes. Here's Kendall. Pushing in transition. Notices Hunter Man helps. Does a good job making a pocket pass. Finish. Just teaching, sharing the ball, sharing the ball. You want to get your bigs involved just as much as you do your other perimeter players. Gets uh, Sharing the ball with everybody on the floor, getting everybody involved. Justin here again, driving down. He tracks, a, you see all these eyes on him. He tracks, attracts a lot of attention. Good pass to James here. Dump. This is out of one of our plays. O'Shawn just came off a stagger. Doesn't have it. Swings it to Justin. Again, Justin does a good shot, <clears throat> job shelling, selling his shot fake. Defender bites on it. Plays off two. These defenders aren't helping as much off the ball side. He notices Hunter Man helps. Tries to jump. Dunk. O'Shawn does a great job. He wants to attack this double gap. Defender does a good job cutting him off. O'Shawn does a better job going behind his back. Getting downhill. Making that defender help to try to prevent the layup. O'Shawn makes another version of a one more, hitting the big, finishes. Again, this defender here, he doesn't want to help. He wants to, he wants to eliminate the, the ball side three. All right, so Justin drives down. He's able to get deep in the lane, which makes this big rotate over. They don't cover down. James makes himself available. Layup. Now, every other option here, we were driving from the ball side slot, ball side slot. Now, we want to drive from the opposite slot, opposite wing, this area. So it's creating an even more space to attack. And you can get downhill and either kick to this corner here. But just for um, this purpose, now we're going to uh, look to hit the big. All right. So one man's going to have the ball. He's going to get downhill, play off two. And he's going to hit the big here for a finish at the rim. <clears throat> so Justin here hits Kendall. Kendall again, great job, catch and go. 
Doesn't allow defense to get set. Create a little brush screen here. They try to switch it. Kendall gets downhill. Notices the, the separation here from Hunter and his man. His man steps above the charge circle. Hunter makes himself available right here along the women's hash. Great job. Step across. Reverse layup. Same thing here. They're trying to really pressure O'Shawn, trying to create a turnover. O'Shawn drives baseline, but it's the same principle. Same principle. Knows the big man helping. Kicks it to the big bucket. Now we got a ball screen. Adrian come off the ball screen. He hits Justin. Again, we're creating a brush. Justin creates a, uh, shows his shot fake. Makes the defender just bite just enough. All right? You see the spacing. This is a perfect example. Double gap right here. Double gap. Getting downhill. Notice his hunter man helps up. Step across. Reverse. So those are examples of with the two-man series and then of the three-man series. All right. And those are just the basics. And, you know, you can put your own kind of twist on it, whatever your offense is, whatever your principles are. Um, but those are just the basics. These are some ways that you can kind of expand on the series. So you can add multiple drives. So you add a driving kick. Now you can add that second drive so that that guy, when he, he's, uh, he doesn't have that initial shot, he's not frozen. He, he can get into the rhythm of driving. He, and he's creating a second drive. He's creating more help. You can play inside out. So when you're, you're implementing your bigs, and you make that pocket pass, say the defense does a good job of cutting him off from finishing at the rim, now you can have your bigs working on opportunities to make passes out of those situations. All right, so the guard can drive downhill, hit the big. Now the big doesn't have a layup. What does he do? Now, th this is good opportunities for, <clears throat> for your bigs to work on their passing skills. Implement some catching goals within the drill. We saw with Kendall, and with Adrian, they did a good job of doing catch and go. Catch and go is just where you catch it on the run. You're not really looking at the rim to get downhill. You just want to catch him, catch on the run, get downhill, and you're creating more leverage uh, with the um, create more leverage with the defense so you can get downhill to either finish at the rim or uh, kick out for a wide open shot. Um, you can start with different scenarios, like I mentioned earlier, with adding situations within your offense. You know, set a ball screen and then get downhill for a double gap to kick it out. Um, <clears throat> set, set another ball screen where you're, you're looking for Euros. And these situations are just helping guys to see how the drill translates to the game. All right, so, you know, the, the generation now, they, everything is visual with them. So if you show that there's a, a play that you run a lot, let's say you run role replace a lot, um, ball screen series, you know, if, if you implement role replace within these drills, it'll show them how these drills can translate to the game. And it, <clears throat> it'll really open their eyes and help with their basketball IQ. And after that, then you can start adding defenders. And now they're starting to make reads. When they're driving in, so say you're driving in, you have a double gap in the slot in the corner, drive in, they don't help off that corner. Now we need to start looking at the rim or now you got that pocket pass to the big on the opposite block. All right. So. This is another way to expand the IQ of your guys and allow them to really start um, really start seeing the game and making plays, and it, it'll help improve your assist-to-turnover ratio for your team. Any questions on anything? Coach, I would comment on the fact that it's very clear, very precise, and I thought the way in which you incorporated simple terminology with your words to show that visual, I'm assuming that's kind of how you translate it to your guys when you're showing them practice breakdowns or you got individual guys showing films that you're really talking through that terminology and or those reads. Yes, sir. We, we try to, uh, when we do one-on-one -on -one film, we do one-on-one -on -one film with our guys and we try to always implement the terminology so they hear it as much as they can and it becomes second nature to them. And so um, <clears throat> we, we want our guys to understand our terminology, know what it means, and know that when we are, are talking about it, whether it's in practice or whether it's in games, we want to do a good job to make sure that they're understanding what they're, 
what they're hearing. Because if they're not understanding, then we're, then we're not doing a good job of teaching it. And so we want to make sure that they hear it as much as they can so that they understand what's going on. Uh, Frank, Kyle Getter of Virginia asked, uh, Frank, do you emphasize passing with a particular hand in the Spurs drill, going left, passing left, et cetera? Uh, we do not. Um, we haven't gotten to that, that level of the passing yet. We may start implementing that this year. We wanted to be as basic as we could be this year with it being our first year taking over the team. So <clears throat> we always wanted to drive right. We always wanted to, wanted to pass with our dominant hand. Now, as we evolve and um, we, we keep improving, we want to make sure that uh, we will uh, probably implement where we're driving left and we want to make that left hand push pass. Or when we're driving right, we want to make that right hand push pass. But Coach Kearns is a big believer. He is not a believer in one handed passes. So when you're making that one hand push pass, you're, you have two hands on the ball and then you may make the one hand push pass at the very last second. And so you don't want to make a push pass where you're, you're, you're pounding the ball and then you're just snapping it with one hand. He's a big believer in having two hands on the ball because if they try to shoot that passing lane, you can't bring the ball back. But if you have two hands on the ball, then you make a one-hand pass at the very last second, then that may allow you to bring that pass back and, and eliminate a potential turnover. Got another one here from Byron Taylor. He asked, uh, after you accepted the job at Presbyterian, what was the first thing that you did? And then after having experience on the floor, after accepting the job at App State, what was the first job you did or first thing you did? Um, as far as on the court. Byron, you want to chip in? Just when, when, when you took the job, not, I mean, not on the court, just what, what was the first thing that you did? Did you start calling recruits? Did you, you know, did oh, you okay, meet I got with you. the new players? Just, you know, what, what did you do? First, uh, when we got the job at Presbyterian and App State, first thing we did was call the returning players because those were now our players. And so um, we, we wanted to show them that we wanted to coach them. We, we wanted them to be a part of the program. And so we wanted to convey that message to them right away that they are our players now. We want to love on them every single day and wanted, <clears throat> wanted them to be as ex successful as they could be under our watch. And so first thing we did was call the returning players and then we called the recruits, uh, any recruits that were coming in. Um, you know, we, we, uh, when we got here to app, we had guys uh, that were already committed so we wanted to make sure we called them. We even went down to um, Donovan Gregory's house and sat down with him and his family and um, let them know that we still wanted them part of this program. We still wanted them to, wanted Donovan to grow within our program and, and uh, be a part of our vision. And so that, that was the main thing. First thing we did was build a relationship with the players because, you know, they're the heart of any, any good program is your players. And so you want to, um, Make sure you build that relationship with them because if you don't have a relationship with them, you treat it just like a job, then they're not going to play hard for you. They're not going to listen to you. They're not, they're going to tune you out. But as you build that relationship with them and they know that you have their best interests at heart, then, you know, we, we believe that they're going to, they're going to listen to you and they're going to play as hard as they can for you. Yeah, P uh, Pierre Miller, Campbell University. Uh, Frank, I got a question for you. You talked about adding defenders to make reads. Um, what, do, what are some things you all are doing to add defenders? Are you having a coach out there? Are you playing three-on-three, two-on-two, uh, no, no, advantage in, game? Yeah, in, in these situations, um, that in, in this particular drill with this series, it would be coaches out there because we, we wouldn't want it live. Um, now, we would we could go three on three live with it and do different scenarios out of it if we wanted to go live and practice. But this particular um, series is just to get guys reps um, and, and getting guys shots. And so we we as coaches would be out there, uh, we'll be creating the reads. And so the guys would know what's coming. We would tell them what's coming so they could visually see the defender helping and know to kick out. And then we wouldn't tell them what's coming. And then now they have to really make the read. And sometimes we get a steal, sometimes we don't. And then their IQ just getting gets better and better through the reps of uh, making those reads and making the right pass. Good question. Thanks.
Hey, Coach Young, uh, Stephen Lewis uh, up at Richmond, Virginia, St. Christopher School. Uh, thank you for doing this. This is wonderful. Um, Appreciate it, Coach. The, the special, man, you guys are very efficient with your dribble. Do you guys have any kind of dribble limit with, with your guys? Are you talking about that, um, being more efficient with the dribbles? Because it just seems like some kind of teaching was going on there. Yeah, we don't, we don't put a, a dribble limit on our guys. We just always talk about being efficient with your dribble. So, <clears throat> you know, if, if you don't need to make three, four dribbles and you already see the help is there, then you just go ahead and, and make the simple play and kick it out. But if you're getting downhill, you see the defender already there, and you're over dribbling, you create a charge, and you weren't efficient with your dribbles. You over dribbled, you created a charge, and now we got a turnover and we're going the other way. And so it, we don't, we don't want to put a limit on our guys because we want them to play with freedom and we want them to have confidence in making plays within the system. And so we allow them to have that freedom to get downhill and, and make plays within the system. But at the same time, if they make those mistakes, whether it's in practice or, with, you know, or in games, in a one-on-one -on -one film session is when we'll talk to them about, hey, this is when we need to limit our dribbles here. What do you see here? You know, why did you over dribble here? Um, let's be more efficient so we can we can kick it out. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Young, Zach Friesman at Winthrop. Uh, great Thanks. job. Really appreciate it. Uh, got a question Thanks, for man. you. What is there an emphasis that you guys put on cutting? Let's say you got one guy at the ball handler at the 45 and you got two weak side. Are you having guys cut based off where the drive occurs, or you just prefer to have everyone spaced? Um, based on personnel, we may have a guy cut. So let's say we have a guy on the 45 of the wing, and then we have a guy on the opposite wing, opposite corner. Um, you know, we have a guy that's very athletic, like Kendall Lewis, for instance, and he's in the corner. And we have a guy on, the, on the, that wing driving middle. We may want him to back cut. And then he, he may get a live for a dunk or, or a bounce pass for a dunk. And so, <clears throat> again, we, we, we show them the examples of doing that, but we don't want to, quote, unquote, give them a rule. We want them to kind of see the game and kind of learn it and, and find those reads within the system and within the drill to see where those openings come up. Because if you give them a rule and then their, their man is – is staying out and there's no room to back cut when now he's just clogging up the lane. And so we, uh, we give them those options more than just having them as rules. Coach, do y'all have a certain number of threes that y'all want to get up a game? Uh, no, sir, we didn't. Um, we we had we had guys that we we uh, really wanted to try to get shots like O'Shawn. He became a very good shooter for us, but we didn't have a certain certain number on it. Um, we just wanted to try to get the best shots that we could. We just like to create the spacing so that our guys can have better opportunities to get downhill and drive the ball um, within the offense. And whenever the offense breaks down, you know, for them to just get out there and make plays. But there were there was no set number on it. But we we. We want to try to stay away from shooting too many. So there were some games where we may have settled uh, shooting threes and we would have gotten around the high 20s, close to 30, and we thought that was too many because those there may be five or six that you can subtract that were contested three where you may have been able to drive the ball and, and get downhill for a layup or maybe kick it out for an even better three. So Never, too, never many. too many, babe. Never too many. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for you guys, Coach. <laughs> uh, Frank, so I've got a question here from KO. He said, is the schedule set for the season? Duke, VCU, and Charlotte are some great games coming up, or are changes in travel going to affect your season coming up? Uh, that's more of a Coach Kern's question. He handles all the scheduling. I'm not sure. I know the schedule is not set yet. Um, Coach Kearns is working – diligently on the schedule every single day, um, trying to get it finalized. Um, so the, the, the travel is a hindrance on it. 
and, and trying to find you know regional games, but Coach Kearns is, is trying to finalize that any any day now. Hey, Coach, can you speak about your transfer portal scenario in the sense that a guy like you, being as far away as you were, not having a freshman year, quote unquote, the way you deemed it to to look like or imagined or all those things yet how did you or what did you as far as wise counsel as far as uh, relationship like you talked about earlier because a guy like you from 900 miles away in Florida could have came back easily and gotten something Mm -hmm. yet you say how do you think that translates to you today and who you are today not just as a coach but as a man and as that translates to your players? Great question, Coach. Um, that starts with the wise counsel of my mother. Um, you know, I, I thought about transferring after my freshman year, and, that, and it was just for a stupid reason. It was, it was a reason just because um, two of the three guys that I came in with were looking at transferring also, and they did end up leaving, and I was very close with them. And so I didn't play a lot, you no. Know, but looking back, it was just a normal freshman year. You know, uh, all freshmen have to understand when they come in that, you know, they're going to have some bumps and bruises, going to be some ups and downs. And I had a, I had a normal freshman year, uh, didn't play a lot, wasn't consistent, um, didn't consistently get in the rotation and uh, was unhappy at times. But, um, you know, talking with my mom, she she kept me grounded and she told me, you're not going anywhere. You know, you you you, you made a choice to go there. You know, they're treating you right. They're not treating you bad. And you need to stick it out. You just need to work harder. And so um, that helps me today because it, it allows me to understand that, you know, in life you're going to have adversity. and You can't just run looking for a better opportunity. You need to make the opportunity you're in a better opportunity. And so <clears throat> with her guidance in that situation, talking with her um, and quote unquote, not allowing me to transfer was the best decision she ever made for me in my life. And so it ended up leading to me having a great career at West Virginia, um, leading to playing, uh, having a, a good stint overseas in Europe, and then applying those same uh, messages that I learned from her uh, after that 2003 season, uh, applying them now to my my coaching career and relaying the same message to our players that there's going to be some ups and downs, but, you know, you, you have to be willing to stick it out and, and be willing to uh, put in the work and, and fight through the adversity because this won't be the last uh, tough situation that you'll be in. You know, you're going to face a lot of tough situations in life, and you have to be willing to in- embrace them and step up to the plate. Thanks, Coach. Hello, Coach. This is uh, Coach Williams, uh, ABC Light in Holly Springs, North Carolina. Coach, how you uh, doing? Basketball. Good, good. Hey, what is your uh, philosophy on weak side ball movement? So if you drive and kick on the ball side, what do you have your players doing weak side? Are, are they spaced out and stagnant, or are they faking backdoor cuts or engaging the, the, the uh, defensive player? So we, we either have them spaced out on the opposite wing or corner, or we have them exchanged. So, um, like Coach Friesman asked earlier, you know, they, they may back cut, but that may just be something that they read, um, like the Isaac clip where he back cut when he saw his man was helping up the line. But more often than not, we just have them exchange on the weak side. So, let's say we have a ball side ball screen on the opposite side. You have two guys, um, one guy in the opposite corner, one guy in the opposite wing. We just want to have – want to keep the floor spaced, and we just want to have those guys exchange just to keep the defense moving and so they have to be aware of them. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. There's some great stuff and some great dialogue, guys. Let's go ahead and jump in with a couple more questions that that, uh, might have for Frank. Yeah, Frank, you talked about, like, uh, your shot prep early in your presentation. What are y'all teaching in terms of, like, footwork? And I know you talked about, like, catch and go and things like that. Is that based on your personnel? If they're a better driver, there'll be more catch and go? 
or are they looking to shoot if they can shoot? Like, what's your, you know, preference? What do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer on the split step, um, you know, stepping into your shot. Um, and then another uh, nugget I learned from Coach Driscoll is the, the permanent, permanent foot, have your foot planted. So if you're, if you're a shooter like Isaac Johnson, you know, he was not a, a great shooter before we got here. So one of the changes we made with his shot was making sure that foot was planted before he even thought about shooting the ball. And so because his feet were all over the place when we first got here. So that making that simple, simple uh, change for him allowed him to really be focused in on his shot, and he he allowed himself to have a more consistent base um, on every shot that he took. Now, um, other guys like say Adrian uh, Kendall, they're very good drivers, and so we want all our guys to be ready to shoot the ball, have their hips back, have the split step, but. We will also work on catching goals within the drill. So, you know, you'll read the defense. And one one instance, you may be looking for the catch and shoot three. Or another instance, you may be looking for the uh, the catch and go to get downhill. And so that that's another thing where we just want them to read it. And then we just implement certain situations that helps them read what situation is better than others. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, Coach, this is Gary Williams again. You mentioned the uh, permanent foot. I, I've been working with several players on that. The permanent foot is ideal when the pass comes on time with proper ball movement. What's your philosophy or training on when the permanent foot set, but then the ball's late? Do you have them reestablish that permanent foot or just keep it down and then go up with the opposite foot? Um, try, probably try to reestablish it. Um, because you don't want them too stagnant. I mean, you, you want their feet alive so that they, you know, they can step into it. So if the if the pass is not on time while they're waiting on it, then you want them to reestablish their position, um, you know, move around a little bit and then plant that foot again to be ready to go so they can, they can step into it. Um, but we don't want them just standing there for a long period of time waiting on it because then they'll get stagnant and then their, their legs will fall asleep and, Nine times out of ten, the shot may end up being short. Right. Thanks. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Any more questions? I'm enjoying this. I'm do this all day. Yeah, no doubt. I, I'm really enjoying the X's and O's and stuff, too. Uh, anybody else with anything? Yes, I, I, I have a question, Coach Young. Coach Taylor. Um, when, when you were showing um, you were showing the implement of big, you had the ball on the wing. <clears throat> you, you had the big in the opposite block in the opposite corner. Mm -hmm. when the ball is on the wing and the guy drives the nail. Do you teach your corner guy to to slide up, fill up, or, or is he just staying and reading? Obviously, he can't cut back door because the big is on the block. Yeah, so he he could stay in that corner or he could fill up to the wing, um, depending on where his defender is. That we okay. we give them that freedom to do so. Um, again, don't want to put too many rules on it. Just want to show them different scenarios. So if we have that guy driving towards the nail, and say his man, the guy. Uh, in the man corner, is leg up on that big. Now you can't you can't make that pass to the big. So now right. you have that that's that's another situation where he can fill up to the to the wing. You can hit him for a shot, or it's a great opportunity if they're closing out to him for another catch and go opportunity. You know, um, I'm a big right. fan okay. of, of catching goals if if guys don't have a wide open shot because it creates it okay. creates um a, an advantage for the offense to get downhill while the defense is trying to close out on a shoot. Yeah, something coming from the back maybe too. <clears throat> Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. Those are good. Those are real good. Excuse me. Go ahead. Um, I have a quick question. Um, sure. You talked about um, – building relationships with the players. Um, you said that you did a lot of calling when you first got to the school. 
but what are some of the things that you do uh, during the year to keep that relationship alive or build on it? Oh, great question. Um, some things we do is, is just we have meetings with them um, throughout the year. Um, Coach Kearns does a great job of having meetings with the guys periodically, but us as assistants, we want to have meetings with them also. We just want them to come stop by the office just to hang out. You know, we don't we don't want them to think that every time they come into the office it's because they're in trouble or we got to talk to them something serious. You know, we want them to just come by and, you know, just let us know how their day's doing. Uh, you know, one of our players, Andrew Muse, is in here. He comes by, just hangs out. We just sit there and watch TV uh, for a little bit or watch some film. And so uh, we, we – uh, we always have an open door policy. We want our guys to uh, always feel welcome and and come in and just, you know, how are classes today? How are things at home? Um, you know, how how's your family doing? How's your girlfriend doing? You know, things like that. And then we'll we'll have, you know, periodic team meals. You know, coach may uh, organize a team meal where we go out and and have some have some meals with them where we watch some watch some sports or, you know, um, may have them over to the house for dinner. Uh, di different things like that, or take them out to lunch. So, you know, guys always, they're always willing to have a free meal. So that, that's another way to entice them to spend some time, which is if, if you're willing to feed them. So, uh, that, but we, ju we just try to spend time with them and, and, um, and, and always know that, you know, we're there for them if, cause, because if something's going on in their life that's not at the best situation at that time, we want them to feel comfortable enough to come talk to us. You know, we don't want them to feel like they have to hide it. And so we, we want to make sure that, you know, they, they feel that comfort to know that they can come talk to us about anything that, that's, that may be going on with them. Okay. Thank Great. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Muse. All right, guys, we got time for one or two more here. Hey, yeah, what what do all do y'all track like during the game? Do you track paint touches? I know you do a lot of penetrating pitching. What are you tracking during the game? Yeah, offensively, um, obviously turnovers, but that, that's track for us. But <clears throat> you no know, little things like that. We track uh, main thing we probably track is paint touches, but it'll vary from game to game, um, depending on what we feel like we can take advantage of against that particular opponent. So um, paint touches is one we want to look for. Uh, another thing we may track is one more um, to, to make sure that, you know, we're, we're sharing the ball and we're not taking those tough contested threes when we have another guy that's wide open. Um, so, you know, different things like that, depending on uh, what we feel that, that we can get against that particular opponent. Good deal. Well, Frank, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate uh, everything. Um, you know, that was awesome stuff, awesome presentation. I, th I think it's very informative. I think everybody took something away from it as well. Um, so I will, uh, I will gather all the, the registration and stuff, and I'll shoot it to you uh, tonight of all the people that registered, came in and everything, too, so you can keep up. Do you want to leave your contact information, or it doesn't have to be your cell, however you want, for these people to stay in touch with you, if it's like your email address or your cell or whatever it yeah, is? Yeah, I, I can, uh, I'll put that in the chat. Uh, I'll leave my, my cell and my, my email if anybody wants to contact me. You know, I'm always willing to you know, help out uh, where I can or, you know, talk some basketball, whatever that may be. So um, I'll definitely leave that, <clears throat> leave that here in the chat um, so that everybody can have it. Good deal. And I will uh, upload this this weekend, probably up Friday, uh, in full length on the Absolute Basketball Experience YouTube page. Uh, if anybody wants to go back through and, and take some notes or, or rewatch or, or, or have it for your files or whatnot. Um, keep in mind, everybody, we do these every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tomorrow, we're having Nick Robinson from BYU uh, come on. And then on Thursday, we're having Joel Justice from Kentucky to come on um, as well. So um, everything's going to be at 2.30. So uh, make sure that you stay on that. You can find it on my, um, on my social media at Jamie Shaw five on Twitter. Um, make sure to give it a follow. Also, all of these go posted onto the YouTube page, as I said, um, 
everything so far. I believe this is the 12th one that we've done. All 11 of them previously are on the YouTube page under the Absolute Basketball Coaches Corner. So it's Absolute Basketball Experience on YouTube. You can go back and have them in their entirety um, uncut and everything too with all the, all the video and everything as well. So uh, Frank, th this was awesome. I I'm really glad that we were able to, to get you on here and get you to talk. I love this perspective. I think your topic you chose is something that's universal that everybody can use too. And you did a great job explaining it and articulating as well. So um, great stuff there. Uh, if anybody has any questions of me, as I said, I am Jamie Shaw at Gmail and at Jamie Shaw five on Twitter would be great. Just DM me and all that kind of stuff too. Um, but thank you guys very much for coming and uh, we will see you next time. Jamie, I just want to say thank you for having me on. Thank you for the coaches um, for attending. Um, you've, you've had a great list of coaches that have, um, you know, been a part of your platform. So I'm, I'm uh, very fortunate to be a part of that list to be able to talk about App State and talk about the things that we do. Um, here within our program. And I want to thank everybody again for attending and hopefully you took away a couple of nuggets uh, today. No, absolutely. And thank you, Frank. And, you know, your name's right up there with all the people that are up there too. I think this is one of the better ones we've had as well too. The, the information that was given and the, the open nature in which you presented, I thought was, was awesome too. So uh, thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely, guys. We'll see y'all next time.